In this particular video, we'll be looking at uh, biomass transfer through an ecosystem. Uh, so there are different terms you need to be aware of, but hopefully you're quite familiar with them because actually you might have covered some of them already in GCSE. So let's start with uh, the word trophic levels. Now trophic levels refer to the stages in the food chain. As you'd be aware, a food chain refers to the transfer of food or transfer of energy through an ecosystem. So at the basic level, we've got the producers. And they will be usually at this level. And the producers refer to uh, plants usually uh, that produce food in the first place. So so they absorb light energy from the sun to uh, do photosynthesis and therefore making, uh, for example, glucose in the first place as our energy. Then the producers get eaten by the primary consumers which occupy the second level of the food chain. They will be usually herbivores that eat the plants which are the producers. So some of the energy gets transferred into the primary consumers. Then the primary consumers gets eaten by other organisms higher up the food chain. So that would be secondary consumers, and they're here. And then the secondary consumers gets eaten by the tertiary consumer. So a food chain can be represented by a pyramid, which represents the number of organisms at each of these trophic levels. So as you can see, most of the time we would have a lot of producers. And then uh, as we go up the trophic levels or up the food chain, we would have less and less of them. Um, however, uh, this pyramid can also be used to uh, represent the biomass of each of these levels. Biomass is the mass of living material in an area or in particular organisms without their water content. The reason why we don't consider water in uh, biomass is because water levels can fluctuate within an organism depending on uh, different times of the day or it depends on the environment that they're in. So it is not a true representation of the amount of, uh, let's say, energy in a particular organism. So we only consider the actual organic living material that makes up a whole being, uh, rather than uh, considering the mass including the water. And we often say that biomass relates to the energy content. So um, in this particular case, rather than saying the number of organisms that exist, we can also say the biomass for each of these levels. And in a lot of questions, when they ask you to calculate the efficiency, ecological efficiency, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, they can correlate to biomass a lot. You need to know how we can actually measure the energy content, or in some sense, measure the biomass. In exams, uh, often you can see in mark schemes, they would say uh, you can use a calorimeter. Please make sure that this is calorimeter spelt with an A. Uh, and that refers to a machine that can measure the amount of calories, or so basically the amount of energy within an organism. But if you go into details of it, you can also say that, first of all, you need to collect some of the sample. And actually, that's one mark in an exam. And then you need to kill the organism, even though it seems like an obvious thing to do. You need to make sure it's clear and is written out. And then what you do is you put it into an oven at about 80 degrees Celsius. And at 80 degrees Celsius, you can make sure or most of the water can be removed by evaporation, but not burning it at 100 degrees Celsius, which may cause some of the organic material to actually decay or disintegrate. So it's important to do that. So what they can do is they put it in the oven at 80 degrees Celsius and they keep checking the mass uh, every now and then. And once they've reached a point where the mass stays the same, that means that all of the water has already been removed. Nothing else can be removed from the sample. So that is their biomass. That's how you can actually lay it out in an exam. Often in exams, they will ask about the energy content, which is related to biomass. But if they do ask the unit of biomass, be aware that land animals can be measured in grams per meter squared, whereas for marine animals or in oceans or lakes, then we use the units grams per meter cubed instead.